Uh, okay, I see Ken's message about recording. There we go. Uh, all right, I see that I am unmuted. Good evening, friends. Uh, here we are for a very interesting Monday Thursday agape meal, the theme of which is love. Uh, in which case, in thinking about this evening's prelude, I have selected seven hymns. I will read you the titles and then play. Uh, you, you will detect a pattern. Number one, love divine, all love is excelling. Number two, God is love. God himself is love. He is there. Number three, oh love, how deep, how broad, how high. Number four, oh perfect love. Number five, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Number six, what wondrous love is this? Number seven, the king of love, my shepherd is.
The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Almighty Father, whose dear son on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had become had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, 
Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of the Man, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a day focused on liturgy. Very basic and profound liturgical actions are recalled and acted out. Any liturgy has at its heart a sacrificial action. We offer something and God takes that offering and does something wonderful with it. Something we cannot do for ourselves. As part of that liturgy is also a day of sacraments. The Catechism in the Book of Common Prayer defines a sacrament as an outward and visible sign of inward and spiritual grace given by Christ as sure and certain means by which we receive grace. There's that word again. The word I talked about a lot last time, grace, which is also the name of our church. That's the word, again, uh, excuse me, the catechism go on, goes on to define grace as God's favor toward us, unearned and undeserved. By grace, God forgives our sins and enlightens our minds, stirs our hearts, and strengthens our wills. Stirs our hearts. I think that is a great way to describe what sacraments do. They stir our hearts. We say there are seven sacraments, but two of them are greater than the others. These are baptism and Holy Eucharist, sacraments given to us by Jesus, and sacraments that definitely stir our hearts. This is the night when we commemorate Jesus giving us the sacrament of Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. The reading from Corinthians sets forth the form of the Eucharist and reminds us that reminds us all that bread and wine offered along with ourselves, our souls and bodies, as it says in the Holy Eucharist, right one, are taken by God made holy and received by us as the body and blood of Christ, a liturgical born again experience that transforms us over and over into more of what God desires us to be. In the reading from Luke, which we will hear soon, we have the words of Jesus as he gave us this heart stirring command to take and eat his body and blood. Speaking with Episcopalians during this pandemic time, both here and at Grace, 
and elsewhere, I hear them say that there are two things they miss the most, gathering together and communion. While meeting on Zoom is nice, and we are thankful that we can do it, it's not the same. We here at Grace have been lucky that we have been able to do the drive-by communion. There are many Episcopalians who have not had any form of com communion for over a year. In my job as a hospice chaplain, some of my patients are Episcopalians. I'm truly grateful that I can offer them communion using the little kits that we use for our drive-bys. When I ask if they would like communion, they are very eager to partake. There is one patient, he and his wife are still very active at Christ Church in Exeter. They are readers and they sing and they're a big part of the church. When I offered them communion, they were overjoyed. They haven't had any form of, com of communion for over a year and we're very grateful for the opportunity. This is the stirring of the heart. That is what a sacrament does. Christ comes to us, giving us grace. Some of you may remember that just over a year ago when my mother passed away, I told the story how we visited her the day before. I read the sacrament of the sick and we all shared communion. I remember my niece standing beside my mother's bed telling her grandmother that she now had Jesus inside of her. I'm not sure if she meant it this way, but I felt as though she was telling her it was now okay to go and be with Jesus and my father. Whether or not she meant it that way, my mother passed that night, having had communion one last time here on earth. Again, stirring of the heart. One of the readings assigned for today that we didn't hear is from Exodus. In the Exodus reading, the focus is on the first Passover, a deliverance from the 10th plague, a horrible plague that killed the firstborn males in every household, except those who lived where the blood of a lamb had been spread upon the household door. That was followed by the actual deliverance of the people from bondage in Egypt into the freedom of the promised land. This sacred text is read at every Passover feast in a liturgical setting as a profound reminder of how a liberating and loving God delivers us from bondage, even death itself. The reading from John focuses on another ancient liturgical rite, that of foot washing. Although not a sacrament, it is still very sacramental. This is something that we here at Grace always did on this night, but we haven't been able to do for the last two years. Hopefully we can get back to it next year. Awkward for some, even distasteful, this solemn act includes the Maundy included in a Maundy th Thursday liturgy causes us to bow the knees of our hearts as we sl slowly and solemnly wash one another's feet, one cannot help but feel the sense of humility accompanied by the ancient tradition, a humility that is not intended to shame, but to assure us that God loves us so much that the Son of God stops to wash our feet, turning all our concepts of higher and lower, above and below, inequality and equality into a new reality of love and affection. Love one another as I have loved you. When we do wash others' feet, we act out the boundaries of that new commandment, boundaries that expand rather than restrict our vision. Perhaps we have washed the feet of someone with whom we have had a disagreement or a person who is struggling with demons we aren't aware of. Perhaps we sat and watched an older person wash the feet 
of a teenager. These are only glimpses of what that love looks like. The living out of this loving one another as I have loved you comes through a community of believers that sets aside its own agenda to help others, that allows its buildings to be used by people who need a safe place to meet, a community that practices radical hospitality to strangers, aliens, undocumented immigrants, the poor, and those who have no helper. So renewed by this profound, profound night of liturgy and transformed by Jesus' taking upon himself the passion of his love for us, there is nothing to do but leave behind the things that bind us. Fear of the unknown, distrust of those unlike ourselves, weariness of others who come to us, and our own feelings of inadequacy. When we are called by the new commandment, we are given the liberation from those fears and the strength to respond. Whatever we do because of this day will transform someone's life as well as our own. Whatever action we take to love one another takes us one step closer to the redemption of the world. Whatever we, whatever we risk of our own comfort and tranquility will be used by God to restore others who are lost and broken. Maundy Thursday gives us liberation, freedom, and grace to become a new community. Not one centered merely on liturgy that remembers, but one centered on liturgy that leads us to act. If we see Christ crucified and risen from the dead, then our lives are transformed forever. If we believe Christ offers himself on the cross as the ultimate act of love, then we can see ourselves as called to act on behalf of others. Amen. Let us now join together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We gather today with desire to know your presence among us. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead us. Surrounded by illness, we mourn our dead. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. We know loneliness and discomfort. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. We cannot see the way that lies ahead. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. Yet, we know you make a way in the wilderness. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. Assure us that you are doing a new thing among us. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead us. At this time, I invite any and all to offer up prayers through the chat screen. I wanna ask prayers for a very dear friend, Phyllis Mackey, who is a longtime colleague and teacher from my last job. She died very young, uh, in her young 60s, and um, I just heard about it today. So I lift up her family and especially her daughter.
Dwight offers prayers of healing for Nancy, Olaf, Beverly, Ali, Mateo, Paul, Teddy, Steve, and Patty. Want to lift up continued healing for Shedrick Grimsley, who's had lots of complications from a late discovered appendix surgery. Want to continue to give thanks for all the leadership here at Grace and all the amazing voices and readers and leaders of this service. Shelly offers uh, prayers for Jeff's fourth interviewed tomorrow. This is the last one. May the fourth be the charm. Go Jeff. Other prayers? Debbie Shu offers prayers for Lori in hopes that her father's health improves. Want to continue to offer prayers for all educators in New Hampshire, particularly as we're going to gear back up to full time uh, in person studying for kids. Shelly offers prayers of Thanksgiving for Kathy's negative COVID test. Continued prayers for all first responders, for all medical staff. Other prayers. Alan Knight offers healing prayers for Steve and Dan and Christopher, each with cancer. Other prayers. Lord, send out your light and your truth on our prayers and continue to lead us. A reading from Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired a desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you in the new covenant in my blood. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. You have fed us with the bread of life in the body of your son. Feed us now with your presence among us and your presence in your word. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine and you refresh us with the cup of salvation and the blood of Jesus Christ, crucified yet risen. May the time come quickly when we can share that cup again, even as you are with us now in our very thirst for you. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. Thanks be to God.
Go to dark Gethsemane, and feel the tempter's power. Your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour. Turn not from his griefs away, learn on Jesus Christ to pray. Follow to the judgment hall, view the Lord of life arraigned. Oh, the warm wood and the gall, oh, the pangs his soul sustained, shun not suffering shame, or loss, learn on him to bear the cross. Calvary's mournful mountain climb, there adoring at his feet. Mark the miracle of time, God's own sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry. Learn of Jesus Christ to die. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the Lord direct our hearts this day and forever in the love of God and in the patient waiting for Christ. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>